You guys have been demanding that I show you my entire collection, so today is the day. I was about to tidy up my cluttered uh, wardrobe there, which is just full of shit, and thought, why not? This is the time to do it. Let's do it. Now, this box was like half full six months ago, and now it's just ran full of stuff, so now... I'm basically going to show you my entire retro slash 90s collection here. So uh, let's do it one by one. Grab your snacks, grab a drink. This should be quite a long video, but it will be worth it. So let's make this snappy. Here we go. Pokemon cereal. Now, I don't know why I bought this. I did an unboxing and I ate a bowl of it on camera with my mate. These are limited edition cereal based from 98 and they're actually worth quite a bit. So I decided to open one up, eat them, and turns out I had the shits for a whole day straight after. So. Don't eat Pokemon cereal that's almost 20 years old. My latest purchase, which a lot of you have seen, is the Sega Game Gear here. Now you're probably wondering, why the hell did you buy it? Well, this was what I put a lot of hours into as a child. Uh, it kind of revolutionized handheld gaming because it came out with a backlit screen and color before the Nintendo Game Boys even got hold of that. So they were definitely ahead of the game. So I got this box, it's in pretty okay condition. And uh, I've been playing it a few hours yesterday, actually. And this thing is awesome, especially Sonic. The classic Game Boy Color here, everyone has to have one of these. This one's boxed and uh, it is my favorite Game Boy of all time. It was the Game Boy that I had longest as a child and it just was absolutely amazing, especially with the classic Pokemon games as well. While we're on the subject of Game Boys, you've seen this one here. This is the one that I found at a car boot for five pounds. End up buying the shell buttons and transforming it into this baby, which is a limited edition Pokemon Game Boy Color here. Absolutely love it. The Game Boy Pocket, this one was sent over by Elliot over at the Retro Future. It's been modded, so it has a uh, front lit display there. I don't know if you can see that if I turn down the contrast. There you go, rocking Pokemon Blue. And I like this one because it's super black, it's slimline, and it just looks super stealthy. Fake Game Boy Color, this thing is actually incredible. It has 66 games built in, it has a backlit screen, you can put in original Nintendo cartridges, classic AA batteries, and it is just generally an awesome thing to have if you're like playing games at night and you kind of want that old retro classic Game Boy feel in your hands. The Advance SP, this was like the birth of the Nintendo DS. It came with its flip screen there, it was extremely portable. You can play Game Boy Colors and Advance uh, games. But most of all, it had a backlit screen so you could play this at night, in the car, in bed. You know, it was just generally an awesome handheld to have that you can play whenever, wherever, and whatever time. This shit here I thought was a Game Boy Micro, ordered it from this Chinese website, and it is nothing like a fucking Game Boy Micro. It is absolutely huge. The Game Boy Printer. You can't have a Game Boy without having this bad boy here, and it even comes with the classic camera as well, so if you need to, you can shoot selfies. But this thing was awesome back in the day. You can see that I tried printed my face there, and the printer isn't necessarily uh, working. It, it can, but I think it needs extra ink or it just needs a real good clean, but just check out that design. Classic Nintendo. Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue, you know what these are. I've got them boxed as well, they're in okay condition. I do need some uh, cases for them though, but uh, these are just going up and up in price. So if you have these boxed, keep them and keep them in good nick. You'll thank me in 20, 25 years. A fake Game Boy Pocket, which is absolutely shite and the worst ghosting I've ever seen on a console in my life. Pokemon Tamagotchi, yes this shit exists and it actually ain't too bad. So it looks like this, this is what the Tamagotchi looks like itself. Classic, basically looks like a mini Game Boy and it is official Nintendo merch as well. I don't know if uh, he's alive. Yo Pikachu dude, you in there? Oh, it's actually on, I don't know if you can see that. Come back Pikachu. Oh no, Pikachu left me. So Pikachu is actually dead. But these things didn't really like go mad back in the 90s, uh, but it was a cool little Nintendo product they released to uh, battle the Tamagotchi on the market. The Game Boy Advance, check out this baby. Now this has been pimped, is steampunked, but overall just a generally awesome uh, handheld that went widescreen and it was the first of its kind to play advanced games as well. So definitely an upgrade from the Game Boy Color in terms of design and comfortability. Classic Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Now, if any of you collect Lord of the D, wow, what a name. So I've got some hollows here, but I did used to collect these, but I used to collect them and then trade them with kids for Pokemon cards. So it was kind of like a side hustle, let's say, but I've got some hollows here. Uh, these were quite popular, especially uh, down in the south of England. These things went crazy, but uh, nothing to compete with Pokemon, that's for sure. <laughs> 
this thing. This is called the Pokemon Thundershock Challenge Game. Now it's basically, I found this for a pound at a car boot and realized slightly after that it's actually official Tiger merch and it's worth quite a bit on eBay. Maybe not in this condition, but it's basically an electronic pinball game that I'll share with you. So you've got this ball down here. I think this isn't meant to be on or that door is locked. I'm not sure, but uh, if I pull this up, Oh yeah, so you've got this ball and you get points. And your points or your score is down here as well. And it's just classic crap from the 90s, but it's awesome. I haven't got a backpack for it. Uh, no wonder it's a pound, but general, generally like an awesome product from Tiger that uh, looks extremely badass. These things, they're called Mighty Maxes. Now, I'm not sure if you had them over in the States, but over here in the in the UK, these things were mad. You'd get like little action figures and you can put them inside. This one's got like a little like spaceship that's like designed into his teeth. And then you've got a scorpion here. If I can open up his asshole. There you go, do that. Um, and it comes out as well, so just check out that. And you'd have like little figures, these aren't in here, they've obviously gone missing, but uh, it's basically like little world. It's like a poly pocket, but for dudes. Pokemon stickers, these didn't really kick off, but you could buy like a, a whole folder or a book and then you could stick them in, but you do get like hollows, rares, and you could obviously trade them if need be. They're basically like the Pokemon cards, but stickered versions. Some classic 90s accessories for the Game Boy. You've got like a magnifier, a grip, a battery pack, some awful earphones that give you a, a major headache instantly. Pokemon stacks. Now I found these at a car boot and bought them for about eight pounds. These things weigh a ton, but they're basically like Pokemon magnets that you can trade. Now you have the second gen as well. You get your classic hollows. Um, I think you get, if we go to the back here, I've got some extras. You've got Entei, Ho-Oh, so some second gen stuff. And then also I think you get like trainers and stuff like that. But these used to sell out like mad as well. I remember having these. And then you get the little book that you actually play on. I don't have a clue how you play, but you got the little play mat there. I guess you stack them up or throw them. If you get them on here, you get three points. Maybe if you're on the Pikachu, you get five, something like that. But these things were pretty big in my time as well. Ninja Turtles official metal collection. Now I found this at a car boot as well, paid a pound for it, but back in the day, you'd buy these coins or collect them, etc. And uh, it should be, uh, it could be worth a bit, but nowadays it's worth absolutely nothing, especially in that condition, good Lord. The original PSP, this thing was awesome, especially when I hit secondary school, I played this on the go. You had sick games like Burnout here, that shit had an amazing soundtrack, but overall, like it was generally known for its high definition gaming in your hand, like it had really good titles that Sony would bring out, and uh, it was just generally a, a competitor to the Nintendo DS. Speaking of the devil, we have the DS right here. Now this was the original. You have that flip dual screen action going on. And that's how it had a one up on the PSP. But in terms of like gaming quality, personally I think the PSP had better games, but this had a dual screen. I think it had a pen as well. I've lost my pen and you could play DS games and you could also play uh, Game Boy Advance games as well. So they, they kind of kept on to their old customers as well as giving them new games. But generally an awesome little handheld there, which is still going strong in 2017 in terms of the 3DS and the XL. The original Pokedex. Now every kid around where I was living had one of these. And, and to be honest, I can see why. Like when you're playing the game, you can have this in your pocket if you need to know more about a certain Pokemon. So for example, if I went to page, I could type in a Pokemon. Let's go if I go to page 098, press enter, and it would come up with that Pokemon there, Krabby. You press down and it'd come up with a little illustration and then it's height, it's weight and a general type and skill. So this thing was awesome and you guys loved it when I unboxed this. It had 3.2 million views, which is absolutely mental. But this was the original Pokedex back in the day from Tiger Electronics. Absolutely pimping. The original Tamagotchi. This thing was fucking annoying back in the day because you had to feed it like every few hours. Mine's gone to space, he's left me. I'm not a good owner, but kids would have these on their like key rings and then just feed them until they evolve and become like a super mutant thing. 
Digimon cards. Now these I find right started as a cartoon but then evolved into the cards to compete with Pokemon. Now they didn't compete. They had nowhere near as many sales etc. Nowhere near as much hype but they're really awesome cards uh, and the illustrations are absolutely awesome as well and, and the cartoons was pretty dope too but you know classic Classic competitors coming out with crap, but personally, I think the illustrations are better. I think it was aimed at more of a mature audience uh, from when I was a kid, but generally still a cool little trading card game to have in your collection. This one's a really weird one as well. This is Pokemon gum from back in the day. Remember when you used to go down the uh, toy shop and be able to grab these alongside your Pokemon cards? Now, they look like this. It comes in like two slabs of gum. Gum back in the 90s was absolutely huge, um, especially the bubble gum. Uh, so the packaging is, is this official Nintendo stuff? I think it is, it's got the stamp there. So Nintendo was actually selling these. Now it come with the gum and I think two cards in the back there, which you can make into puzzles. So a weird, a weird thing to have, but I guess it sold out like mad. My prized possession here, it even has a case to protect it. These are my Pokemon cards pretty much. Now back in the day, this was where I used to spend most of my money and most of my time collecting these things. You got base set, fossil, your original um, uh, second base set, they used to call it a base set two. And then I think this is Gym Heroes. Yeah, Gym Heroes. And they used to come out with tons of stuff. So I still buy these now. Uh, I haven't bought a pack in a few months, but you know, they're, they're just so expensive. Like a pack of these will go to like 30, 50 quid now. And uh, these are like my main collection, I guess, which you could say that are worth like something, I guess. Um, some base set here. Uh, my favorite, I think, is has to be Dark set or Team Rocket set. Came out of cool illustrations like this back in the day. But kids would literally rip throats for these cards, you know, back in the day. Uh, and they're still going strong to this day as well. Coming out with weird EXs like these cards. I don't know why I have these personally. I think they just came with a uh, shit I bought. But yeah, you know, Pokemon cards are sick, and uh, they're definitely gonna keep their value. You like Charizards now? Where are you, boy? Sell like mad, so definitely keep hold of them. Last, but certainly not least, is the Booster Boy. Now, if you watched my Pimp My Original Game Boy, you would have seen this monstrosity. This is basically an Iron Man suit for your original Game Boy here. And there he is. There, there's, there's the original Game Boy living life in this coma-infused machine. And basically, you plug it into the audio jack, you plug it into the power jack, put it into the uh, Iron Man suit there, and um, if I'm right, I need to turn it on. Turn it on. It won't turn on because we need to turn on the Booster Boy itself. Put on the shell, clip that bad boy in, turn it on. And it basically has two massive speakers on the right here that you can turn up from this hatch here, like so. And on the back, you've got your batteries, but you also have a cartridge storage case as well where you can put two cartridges in. And here, is Tetris. Oh wait, you can't see very well? Don't worry y'all, we have a bloody magnifier here for you guys to, to look at. And it's a bit tight because it hasn't been used in many of moons, but there you have it. There is the, the Booster Boy for the original Game Boy. Now, they said this is portable, like holy shit, imagine taking that on the uh, on the train, that just ain't gonna work. But I can see if people really wanted to kind of play, com not competitively, but seriously, uh, they, they'd get this and they'd play Tetris or whatever they have to do through this on a desk. But nonetheless, a really cool product there um, that has like a little storage thing if you want to, I don't, I don't even know what you can fit in there. Maybe a fucking Twix, I do not know. But there you have it guys, a quick look at my entire 90s slash retro collection. I hope you enjoyed it. Drop me a comment below of what your favorite product was in my collection. And if you're really cool, give me a tweet and share me a, a picture of your collection. As per usual guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.